Welcome back everybody. This is the tips and tricks video. So I'm going to be talking about a few things that I wish I knew sooner in our playthrough. Uh, let's start out with the laser tool repair. So um, of all of the tools that you can repair things with, the nail gun is probably the easily, the most easily attainable and then the uh, titanium hammer is needed for your first titanium upgrades but the laser tool is actually an insane repair tool actually have some stuff on me here let's go over here quick still repairing some of some of the damage done to our horde base um, so this is this is how fast this thing works <laughs> an incredible repair tool it, it, it repairs very quickly upgrades very quickly um, if you're looking for a horde base design I would highly recommend something like this um, we put a few things here to kind of keep the bodies from falling out later on because the demons were falling off and when the demons fall off their regeneration starts up again having some electric fences we had more but we had a huge amount of damage from demos um, the titanium actually held up incredibly well against demolishers uh, even the, the reinforced steel blocks didn't do very well, but the titanium, I think our most damage block was like less than a fifth of its health, and we had like five or six demolishers blow up on them, and they were like the big mutated ones with 10,000 health. So highly recommend uh, upgrading to titanium to keep everything on track, but basically this is our main design. We sit up there, we shoot down here, we've got some arrow slits up there to kind of try and stop some of the, the fireballs that are happening. We had some little shooting spots down here for turrets early on, but once the zombies got strong enough, they saw that as the easiest path to get up, so we just filled it in. Uh, definitely be more careful with that type of stuff, but we were just standing in water, so then we would douse ourselves from the fire pretty quickly. And we would just sit here and shoot at them as they jumped up, because they move down real slow. Or they move up the the ramp really slow. Don't do don't do stairs or ramps, because then they'll walk right up. But if it's steps like this, they have to walk their way up. Um, and then we've got little doors that you can step out the side to do um, rockets and grenades and molotovs and things like that. And the the top we actually had just filled in. With uh, I had done some steel spikes and upgraded a couple of them. Let's do my my buddy just logged in. He's wondering why I'm playing. Uh, this basically just works as a steel roof to help uh keep the succubuses out a little longer, and the buzzards if they do get in here they just kind of rattle around a little bit and eventually die unless they're demon ones. But for the most part, this kept us pretty well handled. What he's still <laughs> getting electrocuted. Um, I'm going to turn this generator off. I probably should turn that off, too. Oh, it is off. I don't even know how he got electrocuted. Anyway, my next topic is food. So, I'll go m more deeply into food when I get to the uh, farmer guide. But, here's the TLDR. Get your fruit trees down early. You could probably skip banana trees. The other three are pretty important. You want your oranges, you want your apples, you want your coconuts. Um, mostly oranges is the most important. And the food that you're going to want is orange tea and pumpkin bread. So the reason I say that is orange tea. Very simple. Just oranges and water. Um, definitely takes more oranges if you're in a campfire. As soon as you get to the working ovens, many of the recipes get much cheaper. Um, and then you don't create heat while you're cooking. So definitely get to the ovens very quickly. And then the pumpkin bread is insanely cheap. It's a little more expensive in the fire, but there's not a lot of micro-crafting with pumpkin bread. Now, I say micro-crafting like with the burritos. You have to make the dough, which is like three or four micro-crafts. And then you have to make... Uh, tomato juice, which is another long craft in the mortar and pestle. It's, it's a pain in the ass. There's reasons to make the other food now because they give some of the different buffs. Um, and you can take a look here. You can see these are the foods that give the candy buff right above them. Um, so you can see what's there. And they're definitely... <laughs> uh, 
they're definitely worth making a variety, but I wouldn't focus too much on them. So the pumpkin bread is a five wellness food, and the tea is only three, but it actually has 50 water, so you don't need to bring as many with you, and because it stacks to 15, it's kind of nice. You end up bringing a lot of water with you for one stack. Helps with inventory, but uh, pumpkin bread is just too good for how easy it is to make. And, uh... Just kind of make what you can. The, the meat pizzas are overkill. They give you like a, a food buff because you can only go to 100 food now, 100 food and water, which might be a bug. It gives you like 160 food because of the buff it gives you. It's just kind of wasted. The stews are kind of trashed here. They're okay, but they give you a little food and water. I usually have a stack of stew with me. Once you're max wellness, uh, you can do whatever. But um, Another tip I say is live underground. So I've been growing more and more fond of bases like this, so I actually use the drawbridge as a hatch. And then your vehicles can come in and out. So when... <laughs> I'm, I'm recording right now, get out of here. So, uh... <laughs> uh the, the zombies, when they're in a wandering horde or if they get summoned by a screamer, they will oftentimes just walk right over your base. They won't see you, they won't hear you if you're low enough, and then they're gone. So then, uh... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so living underground is definitely a big thing. You don't have to go far. We, we probably even went... This I wouldn't go much higher than this, but... <laughs> Why is he just following me around? Uh, definitely live underground. You can put nice high walls you can put your workbenches up there it helps to keep things organized there's a lot of ways you can sink stuff into the ground be careful stepping on top of those when they're going uh, but we like sinking stuff into the ground and putting stuff on the walls it really helps to keep things organized um, and then you can build your walls out of some things like ovens and things like that and then uh, using the different types of storage so like the toolbox the red toolbox is our tools the pill cases are our medical stuff you can make a lot of these lockable. So the big thing to search for is lockable. Lockable. You can make different things, and these are like the max size storage inventories that you can have. And then you can you could paint them and stuff if you made the cabinets. But then just make a gun safe. Put your guns in it. You know, make a med pill pill cabinet. It, it really helps just display the information to your team of where things are supposed to go and helps you stay organized, definitely. Uh, Alright. Make lots of horde bases. Yeah, the biggest thing with horde bases, make a lot of them. Make them... They don't have to be real sturdy. These cobblestone horde bases that we've got over here, they have held up quite well. Um, early game especially, but later on they got a little harder. Basically these... Uh, this is fine vanilla and stuff this this works perfectly as soon as you get demons starting to spawn these cages don't do very well if i could rebuild these things again i would build these as solid walls because the demons they can see you through this and the splash damage from their projectile um sets you on fire so having them just not be able to see you at all is great um but yeah this is this is our favorite style of horde base just it's super cheap and simple you don't even have to go to steel. We've made this out of... This was cobblestone for a very long time. Um, I do recommend having the uh, top stair of the ramp be at the same level here. Because then they kind of... They come up to your level and you can sit here in melee. Uh, some of these, they ha the, the top stair is just one lower. And we just need to put one more on each one and then it... Yeah, uh, get yourself a roof, get some spikes on it to help with the buzzards early on, things like that. Alright, so, um, but yeah, and like you don't need a ton of support, but honestly, what we usually do is we just fill these in. Um, it's just a solid thing. Like this, this wood one over here, we were building because we had a quest to place a bunch of frames. And, uh,. This would actually work quite well. Like, as long as you didn't break the frames with your, your, your gun. They take so long to come up this that it's, it just works really well as a horde base. And it's super cheap, simple. 
Um, this was definitely one that we were working on. I, I had an idea and it didn't quite work out. Basically, my idea was have a path that they want to go up and around and then you can sit here, hit them with a torch or anything on fire uh, with a knife to make them bleed. So the whole time they're going up, they're facing away from you and you can debuff them on their way up. And then... <laughs> uh... Oh my god. Uh, once they got up here, we had a whole bunch of dick punchers to knock them off and make them come right back up again. Uh, this ended up failing around the time when we had our first Titans and Behemoths. Uh, they basically just got a little bit stuck down here, and then they just broke the ladder because they were punching randomly. But like the best part about this pace is when you're up here sitting on the bars, you just aim down the ladder and empty your clip. Reload, repeat. You get such great headshots, and if you're using AP ammo, it goes through the targets, and they're always just going to be coming straight up. Um, if anything, I would maybe move this to the left one more so that there's three spaces here instead of two, and maybe add a second ladder for redundancy. Um, I have a lot of things to test with it, and like these things are also for more punchers to knock them off the ladder, so if a person is um, standing on this level, they can have their puncher right there, because uh, the punchers don't activate unless you're really close to them uh unless you're a mechanic so you kind of have to have them close to people but we had a mechanic and he had like three of these up here and it worked pretty well um so uh beehives coops and snares so beehives are a new addition to this uh version uh at least from what i've played uh they're exactly what they sound like they're actually quite cheap to make and uh they just make animal fat and honey so the beehive, like, get yourself some chrysanthemum and goldenrod and some nails early on. Get them early, early, early. The two, the two jars you gotta spend to get there, you'll get them back pretty quick. You just loot them like the chicken coops and stuff, and you don't have to reset them. We have a bunch of these underground. They work perfectly. The top just has to be exposed to the air. Not necessarily the sky, but the air. Um, as you can see, I have some down there by our workbench and then these chicken coops again I, I recommend digging hole two down so that the zombies will walk over them they're really great if you want more eggs and feathers the coops are definitely way to go otherwise you can just do these snares and you have to reset all of these with the animal feed still there's lots of different ways to make animal feed however you choose to do it but get on these early uh, another tip the SMG uh, counts as a pistol and an automatic rifle. So if you can get your hands on an SMG early, I highly recommend if you're going to be a pistol or machine gun guy or you're not even sure which or both, um, definitely take that SMG and start using it early. The, uh, the skill ups that you're gonna get from both of them, I'm not sure if the perks are working on both, I think they are, because we've had some really incredible rates of fire and then like you can also do the uh, feel the heat mod this works in an SMG <laughs> uh, at least for the the rate of fire and reload I'm not sure about the four successive hits but probably so you're just double leveling a weapon skill for you know a, a substandard set of bullets the nine mil usually isn't something that people desire but SMG is a really great way to get that done early on um, of the vehicles I recommend the golf cart if you've got one person in your party otherwise the mini bike is fine but the dirt bike was a lot more desired by our crew um, it has one less row of inventory compared to the mini bike and the golf cart but it is much faster and this is without a turbo if uh, if you've got your mechanic he can make a turbo but this was a definitely it's almost twice as fast as the mini bike um, and only like 30 40 percent faster than the golf cart so, highly recommend making the dirt bike if you uh, make a starter vehicle, if you're going to be driving around. If you really want to be um, cheap and you've got only one friend and you got enough stuff to make one, the golf cart's definitely the way to go because then you can carry both people. But um, Marauder's best box truck has double the storage. The rest of the vehicles are kind of middle of the road. Not a huge variety within them. Um, work trucks and stuff are pretty good early on otherwise just stick with the vanilla 4x4 
Uh, one thing to note, uh, the structural brace mods and the diamond tip mods, they do a percent degradation reduction. So I think the structural is like 20 or 25. This is 40. So a 40% slower degradation. If you happen to be a survivalist or have a survivalist in your team, the well-maintained for 50% stacks with that. So your tools actually last uh, 10 times longer if you have a diamond tip and you're well-maintained. So... If you're a survivalist, you should be a miner. I'll talk more about that in that video, but I didn't realize that perk stacked. I figured you would have the 40% and then 40 and then whatever's left of that 60 would get cut in half. But no, they just add them up. <laughs> it's way too strong. Uh, another thing I got to do, let me get a mega crush here. Uh, you got to find Razor right away. Actually, I probably can just do DM on Prefab Razor House. So Razor is a really great thing to pick up early on. He, After you've done 10 scout missions, she will send you here. Now, you can find this place ahead of time. Uh, we're on one of the pre-made maps, if this looks familiar. She's just north. Uh, there's the coordinates. The thing about Razor is he's got crops already i think they're technically considered player crops yeah so they replant when you break them and he has almost all of the benches and they're working so if you find the tools and you can't make the benches you can cheese out a lot of stuff real early here uh he's got you know a forge that can get steel he's got i think he has a chem bench somewhere uh maybe not i might have lied but uh, definitely come to Razor as soon as you can. If you find him, tell tell your friends about it or tell other people you're playing with. Maybe no chem bench. Interesting. But the the metal workbench is actually quite huge, which brings me to my next point. As oh, excuse me. As the farmer or anyone that has a friend that's a farmer, uh, one of these things it unlocks the iron hoe. Probably just the qu class quest. Uh, the iron hoe. Didn't, I never made it in the past, and I'm not sure if it was always this way, but the Iron Hoe triples the output. So, so there's the Scrap Iron Hoe, which almost anyone can make, but then you have an Iron Hoe. So when I was hitting these pumpkins, I'm getting four pumpkins each. With an Iron Hoe, I'm getting 12. So I went from 4 to 16. So you can harvest a lot more crops than I realized by using an iron hoe, but you have to have a metalworking bench, so make friends with a laborer, or come here and make it. The iron hoe is not very expensive, but you have to have that bench. Um, and I think you need a uh, welding torch, too. But, yeah, 20 iron, 10 wood, and 5 leather. It drastically reduces the amount of farming you have to do. This also works with fruit trees and wild crops. So, here's a chrysanthemum. I would normally get six because of my perks, or two, sorry. But now I'm getting six. So it's you know it, it says it only works on planted crops, but it's not true. Uh, here's some cannabis. So if you want to get some joints, whatever, you can get six instead of just the one or two that you would get if you weren't a farmer or if you are a farmer. Um, and then you, it it is kind of annoying because you end up with one health on this. But I got 15 apples from that tree. Normally you get like three to five, maybe six. So uh, definitely worth bringing your hoe with you if you're going to be going to get different types of crops from like, say, the desert or something. Uh, crowbar, way too strong. As soon as you find your crowbar, keep it in tip-top shape, you know, combine with other ones, whatever. Mods really increase the block damage on it a lot. And then it also is technically a blunt weapon. So when you go into the action skills, if you're, you know, everyone should be using blunt weapons. I, I definitely don't recommend you be the knife guy, other than just gutting animals and stuff like that. Um, because as you level up your blunt weapons, you'll be able to get more and more block damage on here. Um, you really don't need it because it's already quite good, but this blunt damage, block damage stuff goes into... Um, 
the, the crowbar as well. For whatever reason, it's considered that. Uh, it's it's very very good. Uh, let's see, what's my next thing? Cargo container flavor. So definitely don't just make boxes. There are unique cargo containers. Probably need to go direct. Uh, I've actually talked about this in the review, but use different flavors of cargo containers. Don't just have boxes. There are lockable containers that you can make. Just search for them. Make gun safes for your guns and weapons. Make munitions bins for your munitions. Make toolboxes for your tools. It helps everybody know what's up. Lockable fridges for your food and drinks. Saves a ton of time for everybody involved. Um, spend your spend your profession points. Uh, if in a team, uh, spend points on professions, the team might be waiting on you. So that kind of takes me back to the farmer bit. If you're the laborer and you're almost able to make a, a metal workbench, that farmer might be hoping you make that metal workbench soon. If you are the farmer, people are pro always waiting for you to make better food for them. Pumpkin bread is number five. The orange tea, I believe, is number three. Yeah. If you have a profession, you should definitely lean into that profession. These are usually the best points that a person can do. Make yourself a better, um, unique player by doing that. Um, maybe not all of them are the best, so like some of these are like unlocking electrical trap kills and generators and stuff. Maybe don't rush those, but just read your profession stuff. Get to know your profession. Know what your role is early. Um, people may not be so ambitious as to tell you what they want. They're just hoping that you'll figure it out. Uh, another cool thing, engines scrap for mechanical parts. So when we've been wrenching, we get a lot of engines. You can get 30 mechanical parts per engine definitely consider scrapping them. Uh, you're going to have way more engines than you need. We had two boxes that we were using to store all the batteries and engines we had. Um, batteries as well are kind of hard to get rid of because you can only sell three per to the uh, traders. However, if you're a farmer, the growing lights, they sell quite nice. For a little steel, iron, and uh, electrical parts, you can make them and they stack up to 50, so you can sell a lot of batteries for a lot of dukes quite early. And last but definitely not least, if you have a scientist friend or you are a scientist, you can make acid. The recipe for acid is quite cheap. A stack of 100 sells for almost 5,000 dukes with my perks. Uh, I'll show you here. And you get this quite early. Five coal, one boiled water. So if I go to the scientist perk... I believe it's in Yas yeah, Science right here on the third, second one? First one. Right off the bat, you can craft gas cans, a grain alcohol, acid. The second you have that chem station going, start making acid and sell it to the trader. Get, get those traders all full of acid. You're going to have a ton of extra dukes ready for you. Um, it doesn't take long at all. Just pump them out. Uh, make yourself some extra dukes. If you want to know more about each class, I will be going a little bit more in-depth uh, with separate videos for each class, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I highly recommend, recommend the mod. Uh, this is kind of like my farming setup. You don't need a lot of water. Use the ground that they've given to you. These ditches are great for starting. Uh, yeah, I'll touch more on this in the farmer video. Have a good day, everybody.